Okay, in our video series on infectious medicine, in this video, we'll be talking about a very important topic, urinary tract infection. We'll discuss that what are the types of UTI. We'll discuss that what is the presentation and what are the causes of UTI. How do you diagnose a UTI in a patient? We'll discuss that how do you treat each and every type of UTI step by step. First of all, UTI, as its name shows, it's the infection of the urinary tract. And there are several parts of urinary tract. Each and every part of urinary tract infection has a different treatment, has a different presentation. Urinary tract infection is more common in females as compared to males due to shorter length of urethra where it is easier for the bacteria to get entry in the urinary system. Coming to the causes of UTI, in the causes of UTI, the leading cause is E. coli. 80% of the urinary tract infections are caused by E. coli. Second leading cause in sexually active women is Staphylococcus saprophyticus. Sexually active women are very vulnerable to urinary tract infection. Third leading cause is Klebsiella. After that, Proteus mirabilis is a very important cause of urinary tract infection and it causes pungent, irritating smell of urine because it produces ammonia. It is urease positive and it produces ammonia which produces pungent, irritating smell. Other than that, the urine is alkaline in Proteus mirabilis due to production of ammonia and it is also associated with struvite stones in kidneys. Urinary tract infection is classified into lower urinary tract infection and upper urinary tract infection. In lower urinary tract infection, urethra and bladder are involved. And in upper urinary tract infection, kidneys are involved. When the bacteria enters the urethra, it causes urethritis. Then it ascends upward and causes bladder infection resulting in cystitis. Bladder infection is called as cystitis. And when it ascends upward towards the kidneys, that is called as pyelonephritis. And sometimes in kidneys, it results in pus formation, abscess formation that is called as perinephric abscess. The more higher the bacteria goes, the more severe symptoms there are, the more severe infection it is. So the more antibiotic it needs, the longer treatment is required. So the symptoms get severe as you ascend upward. The severity of infection increases as you ascend upward. Now, we'll discuss the symptoms. We'll start with cystitis. Cystitis presents with dysuria, burning micturition, urgency. The patient will have quick urge for urination and frequency. Patient will be urinating frequently. The patient would be complaining that the frequency of urination has increased. There will be suprapubic tenderness. When you palpate the suprapubic part of the bladder, it will be tender. And remember, a very, very important point is that there will be no fever in cystitis. Cystitis will have no fever with it. That is a very important point. That is a very important differentiating point from pyelonephritis. Urethritis will have the same symptoms, dysuria, urgency, frequency, but with that, the patient will be having urethral discharge. Urethral discharge is a sign that the patient is having urethritis. All the symptoms will be of cystitis, but the patient will be having urethral discharge. And urethritis is most commonly caused by two things, chlamydia and gonorrhea. Chlamydia causes a watery discharge and gonorrhea causes yellow thick discharge. So urethritis has urethral discharge. Coming to pyelonephritis, pyelonephritis also has the same symptoms, dysuria, urgency, frequency, but with that, instead of suprapubic tenderness, the patient will be having flank pain and with flank pain, patient will be having high spiking fever. That is what differentiates it from cystitis. So if the patient is having fever with flank pain and burning micturition, that is pyelonephritis. If the patient is having no fever with suprapubic pain and burning micturition, that is cystitis. And if the patient is having discharge, urethral discharge, that is urethritis. And usually these patients with pyelonephritis are given treatment for some time. They are given antibiotics, but despite giving antibiotics, they are not getting better. Their fever spikes are getting higher. They are getting persistent fever. They are having fever all the time, despite being on antibiotics. That is an indication that that pyelonephritis has now progressed to a perinephric abscess.
Other than that, the presentation can be classified into asymptomatic bacteriuria and bacteriuria with clinical symptoms. Normally, the patient having bacteriuria with clinical signs and symptoms, that is a classical presentation of UTI. But what is asymptomatic bacteriuria? In asymptomatic bacteriuria, patient would not be having any symptoms of UTI. Patient would not be having dysuria, urgency, frequency, or, or flank pain, suprapubic tenderness. There would be nothing but the patient would be having bacteria in their urine. So these patients are not to be treated until and unless you find asymptomatic bacteria in pregnancy. In pregnancy, asymptomatic bacteria is to be treated. I have talked about treatment of UTI in pregnancy in detail in my video on UTI treatment in pregnancy. You can check out the link in the description given below. So asymptomatic bacteria is not to be treated. It is only to be treated in pregnant females. UTI can be classified into two groups based on the severity, complicated UTI and an uncomplicated UTI. Complicated UTI is the one that has systemic manifestation, systemic complication. And remember the P's, penis. If a male comes to you with UTI, consider that as a complicated UTI, treat that as a complicated UTI. If a patient is pregnant and has a UTI, treat it as a complicated UTI. If patient has plastic, catheter in place with UTI, catheter associated UTI, treat it as a complicated one. If the patient has diabetes or if the patient has any procedure done on it, any stents in place or any tubes in place in the urinary tract, that is a complicated UTI. Coming to uncomplicated UTI, if the P's are not there, there is an uncomplicated UTI and it is confined to bladder. Coming to the investigations of urinary tract infection, in investigations, urinalysis is the best initial test. You take a midstream sample because the initial stream has more bacteria that is present in the passage. So midstream sample is preferred. And if the patient is unable to produce urine, if there are children who are non-compliant or if the patient is bedridden in that patient, catheterization is done to take the urine sample. What we see in urinalysis is pyuria, presence of pus cells in urine, greater than or equal to 5 WBCs per high power field or greater than or equal to 8 to 10 WBCs per millimeter cube is diagnostic for a urinary tract infection. The cutoff varies according to the sources. Some sources even consider presence of two or more pus cells as diagnostic for UTI in males. So the cutoff varies according to the sources, but greater than or equal to 5 WBCs WBCs per high power field is diagnostic for UTI. Other than that, presence of leukocyte esterase, an enzyme produced by WBCs, is also diagnostic of UTI. If it is present in the urine, if the leukocyte esterase is positive, it shows the WBCs are present, which shows the infection is present in urine. There are some bacteria in the urine that convert nitrates present in the urine to nitrites. Mostly E. coli does that. If nitrites are present, it is indicative that patient has infection of E. coli. And if the patient is having pH greater than 8, it means that the patient is infected with a urease producing bacteria, a bacteria that produces ammonia. Therefore, the urine pH is alkaline and Proteus does that. So urinalysis gives us all this information. Other than that, an important investigation that is done is urine culture. Urine culture is done in complicated UTIs with all the P's or if the patient is having pyelonephritis, if the infection has ascended up to the kidneys or if the patient is having recurrent UTI, what is a recurrent UTI? I'll talk about it in a while. If the patient is having anatomic or functional abnormalities, in all these cases, you must do culture. In urethritis, cystitis generally there is no need of culture. You can start the treatment based on the urinalysis. But in pyelonephritis or in abscess in, or in complicated UTI or in above mentioned cases, you have to go for culture before starting antibiotics. Imaging is not routinely done for the diagnosis of urinary tract infection. Imaging is only done when you suspect an obstruction, obstruction like due to stones, when the patient is having recurrent complicated UTI that is not responding to the treatment and you this suspect that that patient might be having an anatomic defect and you want to diagnose that anatomic defect, in that case you go for imaging. Or if the patient is having early recurrence of UTI despite appropriate treatment. So to gain more information, you go for Imaging. In imaging, CT scan with or without contrast is done. And if the patient is pregnant, ultrasound is done. Blood cultures are not routinely done. They are only done when you are suspecting sepsis in a patient.
Coming to the treatment of urinary tract infection, we'll divide treatment of urinary tract infection into urethritis, cystitis, pyelonephritis, and perinephric abscess. In the treatment of urethritis, as I said, that the two organisms are most common cause of urethritis, chlamydia and gonorrhea. So you need to treat both of them. Even if you are sure that the patient is having uh, chlamydia infection, you give treatment for both of these because these both are found together. You give ceftriaxone 250 mg IM with 1 gram of azithromycin per oral 1 dose. So 1 injection and 1 oral dose. Or you can also give doxycycline 100 mg per orally BD for 7 days and azithromycin 1 gram per oral single dose. So these are the two regimens that can be used for the treatment of urethritis. Coming to the treatment of cystitis, if the patient is having cystitis, then the patient is treated accordingly, whether that patient is having uncomplicated infection or a complicated infection. If the patient is having an uncomplicated infection, the duration of period for antibiotics is less. It is from three to five days. And if the patient is having a complicated infection with all the P's, that patient is given treatment for seven to 14 days. In uncomplicated UTI, you give nitrofurantine 100 mg for five days, or you can give trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole per orally for three days, or you can give a single dose of phosphomycin three gram, one dose only. In complicated UTI, you give ciprofloxacin 500 mg per orally PD for seven to 14 days, or you can give trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole 160 to 800 mg per oral BD for seven to 14 days. Or you can also give ceftriaxone 1 gram IV 24 hourly if the patient is admitted with you. So the treatment varies depending upon the complicated or uncomplicated status. Coming to the treatment of pyelonephritis and perinephric abscess. If the patient is having pyelonephritis and you are treating that patient outpatient, you can give ciprofloxacin 500 mg per orally PD for 7 to 14 days, or you can give trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole per orally PD for 7 to 14 days. If the patient is inpatient, if the patient is admitted with you, in that patient, you need to give cefraxone 1 gram. IV for 14 days, or you can give any amino glycoside like gentamicin 5 mg per kg IV every 24 hourly. Other options include cefepime, piptazo, carbapenem when the patient is admitted. If the patient is having perinephric abscess, that abscess needs drainage because that cannot be treated with antibiotics because these are the patients who you give treatment for pyelonephritis and they are not getting better. They are developing persistent fever despite being on antibiotics. Suspect perinephric abscess in these patients and these patients need drainage with antibiotics and antibiotics are given in the same way as we give in pyelonephritis, but we have to do drainage of the abscess. Coming to the prevention, with the treatment, you need to counsel the patient on the prevention, on the behavioral modification. Patient need to take increased fluid, timely bladder voiding, post-coital voiding, and maintaining the genital hygiene. So these are the important factors that the patient need to maintain when the patient is having UTI. If the patient is having recurrent UTI, recurrent UTI is defined as greater or equal to two UTI within six months, or if the patient is having greater than or equal to three urinary tract infection within one year, that patient is said to have recurrent urinary tract infection. These recurrent urinary tract infection patients need chemo prophylaxis. They need prophylactic management and pro chemo prophylaxis should be considered in all women with recurrent UTI. Chemo prophylaxis is given based on the severity of infection. Some patients are put on continuous prophylaxis. Some patients are put on intermittent prophylaxis. Continuous prophylaxis is given to the patients for 3 to 12 months in which they are given antibiotic trimethoprim per oral OD for a long time and you keep reassessing the patient. Other than that, you can give nitrofurantine 50 to 100 mg per oral OD or you can give phosphomycin 3 gram per oral once every 10 days. So a prophylaxis is given and the patient is reassessed for this period of time. 
Intermittent prophylaxis is given to specially to the women who get urinary tract infection associated with sexual activity. So in these patients, intermittent antibiotic therapy is given when they are developing symptoms or when they have a sexual intercourse. So post-coital prophylaxis and it is re recommended in women with a recurrent UTI associated with sexual activity. Trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole 40 to 200 per oral 1 to 2 tablet once after they have the sexual intercourse. Or they can also be given when the patient feels like they are developing symptoms of urinary tract infection. Cephalexine 250 mg per oral once or you can give nitroferentine 50 to 100 mg once dose when they feel that they are having symptoms or when they had intercourse. Cranberry products have shown to have a moderate benefit and little risk so they can also be given. In summary, we talked about what is urinary tract infection and all the causes. We talked about the classification, urethritis and their symptoms. We talked about urinalysis. We talked about performing the culture, in which cases you do not need culture, in which cases you perform the culture. Then we talked about imaging. We talked about treatment of urethritis, treatment of cystitis based on the complicated and uncomplicated. We talked about pyelonephritis treatment, abscess treatment. We talked about behavioral modifications. We talked about your recurrent urinary tract infection prophylaxis. So this was all about urinary tract infection. If you liked my video, please click on the subscribe button and check out my other videos on infectious medicine playlist. The link of those videos is given in the description below. Thank you very much.